KC. Welcome to the kitchen of my old Kentucky home. Today, we're gonna to be shaking some things up with lemons. Because what's that old saying? When life gives you lemons, make pies and cocktails, right? Well, at least in Kentucky we do. Let's get started. Today, we're making shaker lemon pie. Here's what we'll need. Two lemons, four eggs, two cups of sugar, and some fresh pie dough. All right, let's make this shaker lemon pie. We'll start with our lemons. Now these are not shaker lemons, they're not a variety like a Meyer lemon. Uh, the shakers are the recipe uh, that we were using and I'll talk a little bit more as we get started. I just need two large lemons, kind of feel them first, make sure they feel like they've got, got enough juice in them. And what we're gonna do is um, get rid of the end and we are just gonna slice these as thinly as possible. We are going to use the entire uh, lemon peel rind and all, really everything but the seeds. Oops. And they don't have to be perfect, but these are going to, as we cover them in sugar, it's basically an old preserving technique. The sugar is going to bring out the natural juices in the lemon, and also it's gonna neutralize those bitter oils uh, that are in the rind. So those shakers, um, you know, we know them for their, their architecture, their furniture, the shaker chairs, um, brooms, a very simple way of life. Um, they were really um, very, very brilliant people in a lot of ways. Um, maybe just not on the reproductive side, right? Okay, the next thing we're gonna do with the lemons is before we put them in this bowl, we're going to rid them of their seeds because no one wants to bite into a lemon seed and when we get in the pie. And you gotta be, uh, really take a good look because as you're slicing them, you're slicing, you might be actually slicing through seeds so they kind of get to a, a thin look. Okay, we have our lemons all sliced and seeded, and now we're just going to simply add our two cups of sugar. This is just simple white table sugar. Suppose you could also use demerara or organic sugar if you wanted to. And we're just going to get these nice and stirred up. This is a, an old method um, of preserving lemons. Um, you can also uh, read the, the shakers and, and many Kentucky cooks back in the day, as they say, would also um, boil them down to get their juices. And one of the things I read that I thought was really cool uh, is they would uh, dip a piece of wax paper in brandy. Um, Kentucky was a big brandy state back in the day and it's becoming that again. Um, I just thought that was a neat way to preserve that. I can picture that sitting out on the counter with a little string tied around the, the mason jar with your preserved lemons. Okay, now we're gonna do, this is getting uh, nice and uh, stirred up. We need to let this uh, sit for at least two hours or you can let it sit overnight as well. But I have already got one ready for us to use. So that's what it's gonna look like. This has been um, sitting, oh, for probably six hours. And you can see how it really, that sugar, just like when you put sugar on strawberries and you get that, all that juice, uh, that lemon juice has really worked its way into this sugar. I wish you could smell the citrus on this. Okay, so we're just gonna keep this to the side for a moment and keep going. Next thing we're gonna do is beat our four eggs. And I just used some medium-sized ones for this. those nice and frothy. And we're simply going to pour them back into our lemon mixture. And these are the simple three ingredients for our shaker lemon pie. Lemon, sugar, and beaten eggs. Now we're ready to roll out our pie dough. And I have used just a basic recipe for pie dough that your typical recipes that I've seen make enough for two pies, except we're going to need a bottom and a top. You can also um, use a store-bought uh, dough, either the one that already comes in the, a little tin um, or that, that you roll out on your own. But if you use two tins, you will need to take one out of the tin completely and roll it out for the topper. So the recipe that I use as most um, uh, pie doughs, well, you can use lard, I use butter. And because of all the butter in it, you really don't need to um, 
flour your counter to roll this out, nor do you need to uh, grease your pie dish because it'll be self-greasing. So we're gonna roll this out to a little over a 10 inch disc to fit into our nine inch pie pan so it can come up the side. Let's see what we've got here. Well, just, a, just a little bit more. I like to use the glass pie pan so we can see that beautiful golden crust as it bakes. Okay, now that that's rolled out to a little over a 10 inch circle, I'm gonna use this dough scraper. It's just a helpful tool to, like I said, it's had a lot of, has a lot of butter in it, so you can get it off. You don't need the flour, but um, it sticks a little bit. So we wanna be able to get this all off in one piece. Okay, we're gonna lay that in our pie plate. Gonna prepare it for our filling. Scooch it all the way into the corner. All right, that one's ready. We need to go on and roll this out for the top. We have our pie plate prepared with our dough, and now we're just gonna give our lemon filling just a, another couple stirs. It's been sitting while we rolled that out. Gonna pour it in to our pie dough. And then this is a little messy, but necessary. We're just gonna get in there and take the lemon slices and just evenly distribute those, almost in like a tart fashion. For two reasons. One, aesthetics, but also you don't want someone to bite into six pieces of lemon wheel there when no one else gets any. Okay, now we're gonna take our second uh, rolled out pie dough, use that dough scraper to pick it up, and then we're just gonna lay it on top. We're gonna crimp it down the edges. And just to, if you, you can make it rustic like this. If you wanna trim it up a little bit, you can do that with some kitchen scissors. Trimmed up nice and tidy. And then you can leave this plain if that's the look you like. My grandmother's always, you know, I love my backsides of a fork, so we're gonna use it again. Great kitchen tool. And we're just going to put a little decorative crimp all around the edges of our pie. Also serves as just an extra way to make sure that you have sealed it in. Kind of steam itself as it's cooking. As I say that, we still need a release valve, so we're gonna just put a couple of slits in the top of our pie. And then that'll look even a little browner when it comes out. All right, we're gonna put this in a 450 degree oven for 15 minutes. We're gonna open the oven, we're gonna turn it down to 375 and cook it for an additional 20. And if it's starting to get a little brown around the edges at that 15 minutes, we're gonna to top it with a little piece of aluminum foil so it doesn't get too burnt. So let's cook this pie. Today I'm gonna to make a version of a classic sidecar cocktail where we're gonna swap in bourbon. So we're gonna use Louisville's own rabbit hole bourbon, Cointreau, which is a sweet orange liqueur, fresh squeezed lemon juice, and I've got sugar for garnish. This is gonna be a pretty tart cocktail, so we are going to rim our martini glass with sugar. So just take um, a wedge of your lemon and go around the whole outside of your glass. And then I've got a saucer of sugar to make this easier. Just kind of swizzle that around in the sugar and it'll stick to the lemon juice. So there you go, just a nice light sugar rim on there. All right, the next thing we're going to do, I've already got a cocktail shaker that's full of ice, so I'm just gonna add my ingredients. And this is actually a perfect sidecar 
And by that, it's not just the perfection of the making of the drink, it means that there's equal parts of all the ingredients. So I'm gonna do a shot of bourbon. And a shot of the Cointreau. And you can use other um, citrus liqueurs, but really this is the best for this cocktail. And we're gonna use one shot of the lemon juice. And I actually used Meyer lemons, which are gonna be a little bit sweeter and a little less sour than uh, the other lemons that you'll get at the grocery store. So we're gonna give this a good shake. Like I always say with the fruit juice, you gotta shake it to wake it. And we want some of those ice chips in there too. So. All right, that should do it. Everything's nice and cold, a little frothy and mixed together. And finally, we're just gonna strain this into our martini glass. There you go, we've got our perfect bourbon sidecar. Well, Stacy, I think we have had our fill of vitamin C for the day. I think you're right. <laughs> and has there been an episode where we've been more on theme? Lemons in both recipes. I don't think so. Yeah. Certainly wasn't making cocktails with mutton. Right, <laughs> right. Speaking of cocktails, uh, the sidecar, that's a, a retro recipe, right? Yeah, so it's actually one of the six kind of really classic cocktails, but it's usually made with cognac. Obviously, we upgraded with the bourbon. Okay, well, I really like it. Uh, what did you think about the pie? You know, I really think it's inspired me to go to Shaker Village, which, yeah. embarrassingly, I have never been to. So I feel like a bad Kentuckian. Uh, well, it is a beautiful place. Um, I have been a couple of times when the kids were young. It was a place um, that they like to go. We, we stayed um, before, and there's plenty of things to do. Like, they have on the Kentucky River uh, a steamboat, the Dixie Belle. You can paddleboard now, the whole YOLO thing. Do they have cocktails? They do have cocktails, <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. Back in the day, it was a great, it's just an idyllic place for a, a weekend, like retreat, lots of things to do, but they didn't. And so only recently have they started serving cocktails at their restaurant, which is wonderful. You can get all the Southern traditions, fried chicken, pimento cheese fritters, shaker, lemon pie, of course. Yeah. So I think you and your sister would love it for like a, or your girlfriends for a girls getaway weekend. Yeah. It is just that kind of a place. Well, that sounds like a plan and I'll be able to compare the original to your version. I think so, and and it's just a little under an hour away in Pleasant Hill, Kentucky, originally called Shaker Town, but it's Shaker Village. Okay. I think you'll enjoy it. So here's to the long gone shakers, but they're not forgotten recipes. So true, and for more recipes like this, be sure to check out culinarylouisville.com, and we'll see you next time on bourbon and biscuits. Cheers. Cheers.